You're watching Our Changing State, I'm Matthew Petty. It's been a bruising election campaign and a brutal hurricane season. And your nerves may be afraid you might be looking for reassurance or answers. Well, unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation swirling about on social media. A lot of it's driven by politics, AI, and the rumor mill. And a lot of that misinformation is preying on people's vulnerability. Can you spot what's real and what's fake amid the images of politicians and storm victims cascading through your social media feed? Well, here to help is Alex Mahadevan. He's the director of MediaWise at Pointer. Alex, you told us back at the beginning of summer that the problem with AI is that it puts the power in everyone's hands to become a political operative and potentially flood the zone of AI-generated images and text aimed at trying to influence people. How much has changed in the last four months and how much more sophisticated has AI-generated imagery become? Well, uh, unfortunately, I was right in my thoughts that uh, I, I, I really thought that people would start using AI-generated images more often. Um, we're seeing lots more of them. The technology is getting a lot better, so it's a lot harder to spot these AI images. But honestly, what I've seen is the biggest shift has been in the people who are uh, sharing these images and how they feel about them. Specifically, they don't care that they're AI generated. That is the bit thing that has worried me the most. So we, we're seeing the zone flooded with AI generated content and people are sharing it because it supports what they think about the world. Mm hmm. I wanted to talk about some recent examples of those images that have popped up recently on social media in the last few months following Hurricane Helene. There was a flurry of these images that emerged as North Carolina grappled with catastrophic flooding. And there's a few variations on a child wearing a life jacket and clutching a puppy. Uh, let's just take a look at some of those. So here's one of the images. Um, and then there's another one too, if we could take a look at that as well. So both of these images depict uh, a clearly distraught child um, wearing a life jacket, sort of clutch, clutching a, a bedraggled puppy. There's obviously flooding in the background. And these are really uh, evoking um, a quite a kind of passionate response from people. What's your takeaway from the images, Alex, and the people's reaction uh, online? Well, uh, the thing that disturbed me is that there were plenty of images that came out of uh, Appalachia following Hurricane Helene that showed people's anguish. Um, there were homes and businesses washed away. My favorite town in the entire world, Chimney Rock Village, was half gone. Um, yet for some reason, the images that seemed to go the most viral, that seemed to stir the most emotion, were these AI-generated images. Now, I think part of it was uh, it is a little girl and it is a puppy uh, just looking sadder than you could ever imagine. Now that there weren't any images, you know, that came out of the disaster that looked exactly like that because there weren't photographers who were, you know, waiting around getting right in people's faces. So I can see why people shared it because it is something that just absolutely punches you in the gut. And if you're not thinking about it and, and you don't look closely to see that, you know, it looks a little too, uh, computerized, then you might share it. Now, um, the thing about the, the image is like, I, I totally understand wanting support for victims of this, but by sharing uh, fake images, all you're doing is um, making it harder for real victims to, um, you know, to get their story out there. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of coming back to that notion you're talking about of flooding the zone. There's obviously fake images that are clearly fake. I mean, here's one of a child and a puppy on the back of an alligator. And I think this might have been generated kind of as a response of tongue in cheek to some of those other fake images that we saw, which were supposedly, uh, quote unquote, out of the flooding in North Carolina. So, um, you know, even though this this image, Alex, looks fake, it's a, a child that looks pretty uh, pretty cool about being on the back of an alligator clutching this puppy. What impact does that have on the general ecosystem of AI imagery floating around? You have this kind of wash of images. Some of them look more real than others, but what's the kind of overall impact of all of this? Well, ultimately, it just it sort of cheapens real art and it cheapens real images that show real joy uh, or real pain. I, I you know, I, I the image that you just showed um, was post Milton, and and it was in response. It was sort of a joke, like you know, look at how, how many idiots I can get to share this. 
But, but what happens is when you see this tit for tat AI generated image for AI generated image, what you're left with is this sort of like slime like false reality that we're seeing on social media that, uh, you know, it might be funny, but it's not really humorous that uh, our reality is being completely supplanted by artificial intelligence. Mm hmm. Let's talk a little bit about politics too, because we are seeing an awful lot of political images making headline, headlines. And Elon Musk has shared a few on the site that he owns, X, formerly Twitter, including an image that appears to show Kamala Harris addressing a communist rally. So, uh, Alex, uh, you know, this image was also shared by Donald Trump. Um, there's also a bogus Kamala Harris campaign ad with AI generated voiceover. Even when AI-generated images and videos are pointed out as fake, can they sway someone's opinion about a candidate or an election? I, absolutely. Um, I, I, I think the, the point of these AI-generated gener images is, well, it, it's not necessarily to sway someone's opinion. I think what it is is to confirm someone's existing opinion. So, so for example, with the Kamala Harris uh, uh communism rally that is AI generated. That might be seen by a lot of uh, maybe moderate Republicans. But they see that and, and part of them is like, oh, you know, I, I keep seeing all these commercials about her being a socialist. Now I see this image and it's like, oh, OK, that completely confirms it. There's absolutely no way that I would ever want to vote for a, a, you know, a communist. So these images, while they do, I think, sway some people, I think the biggest harm in all this AI generated political content is it's keeping people locked in their uh, polarized unreality, because it, it is not realistic to say that Kamala Harris is a communist or a socialist. However, there's a large swath of people who want to believe that, and they get to believe that if they see an image that looks like this. So they get to live in this false reality. And, and one thing I want to point out about that image, too, is if you compare it to the previous one, the previous one had a little note on it on Twitter that said, this image is AI generated. Mm -hmm. This image does not have that note. And uh, that's because this um, community notes fact checking feature on Twitter completely fails when it comes to political content. So, uh, you know, it's just it, it, you see AI generated political images are just are not getting flagged by fact checking systems on on Twitter. And uh, that's a disappointment, too, uh, to me. Alex, kind of to that point, I mean, do AI generated media help add weight to conspiracy theories or claims that have their origins in some kind of cynical political point scoring? And, you know, for an example, the debunked claim that Haitian immigrants are eating pets. And there's an image to go with this, too. It's um, one of many. But here's one that shows uh, former President Donald Trump kind of clutching a duck in one hand and a kitten in the other. And this is kind of along the lines of slightly tongue in cheek, but sort of joking, but not really just kind of adding weight to that. How do these images sort of help fit into that narrative of even if something is, uh, you know, origin originates in a falsehood, it kind of gains legs and, and becomes something has something of its own energy sort of moving forward? Well, it's it's like I said about just um, turning anyone into a political operative. It can turn anyone into a uh, a full-fledged conspiracy theorist. I mean, back in the day, you had to listen to, uh, uh, what was that radio show? Um, there, there were like call-in radio shows. Oh, Rush Limbaugh, about, for example. It, well, well, Rush Limbaugh, but I was thinking more like way out there, you know, like Sasquatch and aliens and, uh, and what have you. But it, nowadays, um, anyone can go on and create an image that just adds fuel to the conspiracy fire that um, you know, whether or not the image looks real or not, if you're seeing, you know, 5,000 images uh, that that seem to support this debunked claim about Haitian immigrants eating pets, then that's going to fool a lot of people. It's going to, like I said, keep people locked in that uh, uh, unreality that they have built around themselves. And so um, and, and it's just general, you know, there was a Clemson report that, that came out uh, either today or yesterday that showed that there are these bots that can fire out, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tweets that uh, are all generated via AI. And that's text, you know, so text and images. It's all about being able to just create a lot of content that supposedly and people believe confirms these conspiracy theories, because if they open up Twitter and they see 100 posts in a row that are all saying 
this claim is actually true, then they might believe it, you know, even mm -hmm. though it's false. Some misinformation that's erupted lately doesn't seem to need any AI to push it along. I mean, the idea that the government, for example, is steering hurricanes towards certain parts of the country or the pet eating conspiracy. Now, in the Tampa Bay region, the Pasco County Sheriff has had to do some social media fact checking on claims that Haitians are being, quote, stored at a business. In fact, the building in question is a special needs shelter. But I mean, Alex, how easy is it for people to get their bearings on the truth when there is so much misinformation floating around out there? Well, it's really hard. And I mean, it's uh, so I saw this post and um, my first thought was, wow, the Pasco Sheriff's Office probably had to devote a couple hours of however many staff members to uh, go check out because it said they went and checked it out like they they had to devote however many hours however much staff time to debunk this absolutely wild claim made by a completely unhinged person who claims to be a journalist but is a conspiracy theorist and um you know so so it's it's wasting resources um and it's getting harder to tell fact from fiction because there's just so much of this stuff online you know so um, this guy shared this tweet. Uh, it was seen however many thousands of times, I think in the tens of thousands, at least when I saw it. Um, and that's, that's already, you know, way past what a debunk can, can generate, you know, cause the Pasco sheriff debunked it, but it was just, it was too late. This guy had already done the damage. Mm -hmm. Another thing you noted, Alex, when we spoke last, there are no guardrails to stop the spread of AI. I mean, one thing I have noticed on uh, social media is that you do get users stepping into fact check and warn people of misinformation, but how effective can citizen fact checking be? Uh, honestly, I mean, it, it, at least within a community, I think it can be incredibly effective. And, and when I say community, I mean like in-group fact checking. So if uh, so here, here's an example. So I, I join a, a lot of wild Facebook groups to monitor misinformation, and I'm in a Facebook group for truckers. And there were a lot of people who were claiming that the government chemtrails were making love bugs uh, die out. Um, so they were saying, you see less love bugs on the road because of all these chemtrails. Well, what I started seeing is dozens and dozens of these truckers coming onto Facebook and saying, no, 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 that is absolutely incorrect. I've been driving my truck around for the last 10, 20 years. There are as many love bugs. And then I would click the, on the profiles of these truckers and they are far right. They are sharing other conspiracy theories, but they are changing people's people's minds who who are usually, you know, vulnerable to this type of misinformation because they have that lived experience. So I think mm -hmm. in group personal fact checking is incredibly, uh, incredibly powerful. And that that's we're always trying to encourage people to have these conversations with their friends and their family and their colleagues and those in their community, because you can make a difference uh, much more than, you know, the Pasco Sheriff's Office having to come in and, and you know, uh, uh, debunk something like this. Alex, what are some tools that people can use to check if an image or a video is fake or if a claim is false? So unfortunately, there aren't great tools specifically for identifying AI generated images. Uh, what it's all about is trying to answer the question of who posted it, um, trying to dig into the bio uh, of whoever shared the image, let's say um, this person who shared the image of the um, of that uh, shelter and made all those claims that were completely false. Now, all I did is I took a few seconds and I did something called lateral reading. I opened up a couple tabs. I searched his name. I searched his business. And I was able to find out that he is a, a, a prolific conspiracy theorist. His Instagram was filled with um, you know, some pretty wild photos and the things that he said and shared on social media uh, don't indicate that he's an expert or journalist in anything. So lateral reading, opening lots of different tabs and trying to search, uh, cross check a name and organization to make sure who's sharing that uh, is an expert. That's honestly it, one of the most powerful things you can do is before sharing something, making sure what you're sharing was posted by an expert or um, a legitimate journalist or uh, more importantly, a fact checker. Um, for the AI generated images, what you can do and what I encourage is um, doing a reverse image search. So uh, there's a tool called Google Lens. If you are using Chrome, it actually pops up in your uh, URL bar. 
to search for an image and uh, you can search the web by image. And uh, if you see an AI generated image that you think is AI generated, you can do a search on that and it might lead you to an artificial intelligence art community. It might lead you to a fact check that's saying, listen, this image of the little girl and dog is actually AI generated. Um, so there, there are uh, a, a couple of tools, but it's all about just being critical of what you see online and not believing something just because it confirms how you feel about the world and what your politics are. So, um, you know, really thinking, uh, trying to uh, practice intellectual humility. And when you see something that that makes you feel like you are 100% right and you've always been right, that's a cue to uh, stop and check it out. Some good advice there. Alex Mahadavan, director of MediaWise at Pointer, thank you so much for your time and your insights. I appreciate being here. It's a, a really interesting topic. And you've been watching Our Changing State Vote 2024. I'm Matthew Petty. Thanks for tuning in. Our Changing State is a production of WUSF. Our executive producer is Grayson Doctor. Scott Wachtler produces the podcast. Videos by Warren Buckholtz and Chandler Balcom, who also does our graphics. Engineering support from Blake Bass. Jackson Harp composed our theme music. I'm Matthew Petty. Thanks for listening.